Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh Bashim, Abashai, Bashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders, salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever, to the scattered, hopefully, elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that are uh, mixed among the heathen nations, that be like unto the speckled bird. And to the Akwaf that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolma from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago. And um, this video that's featured on RT is basically talking about world hunger and famine that's coming across the whole earth. And the men of the Lord from the apostles and the elders on down have been telling you this for well over 35 years. All right, and for the last almost 13 years on YouTube now, which this platform is is vastly and quickly disappearing. But uh, I want to read this scripture. I'm going to start with Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and the 68th verse, a uh, scripture that most of you should be very familiar with because um, deliverance and destruction takes place in the new Egypt. And its place isn't... isn't Physically Egypt is spiritually Egypt. And I'm going to read a couple scriptures to prove that. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And it reads, And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again, which shifts. All right. So the Israelites were going to Egypt again. Egypt mean, meaning house of bondage, slavery. All right. With ships. So the Israelites went into slavery on ships as it was prophesied. All right. There's a scripture that talks about a yoke of iron around their neck. You know, and we know that that never happened to the Israelis. They never got went into slavery with uh, yokes of iron around their neck on ships. As a matter of fact, when you do your diligent research, you find out that they own the slave ships. So this couldn't and is not talking about them. And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. That it was Israel. So the Israelites would never go to Israel again as a people, all of them together, until all these prophecies, 2,000 plus years of prophecy took place. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men, slave men, and bond women, slave women. And no man shall buy thee. Buy was an old Quaker word for redeem. No one will redeem you, meaning that you are going your brown behinds into slavery, and that is it. Now let me, and so after 2,000 plus years of prophecies have taken place, we've come to this portion. This is 2 Ezra 15 and 11, and, it's, and it reads, But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues. All right? As before, and will destroy all the land thereof. So plagues are not falling on Egypt, though it's falling all over the whole world. But but particularly in this place, this new Egypt, plagues are gonna come because as we watch this video, they do, they try to downplay the fact that there is serious hunger in America already. All right, that 27 million people file for unemployment, but there's probably about another 10 to 15 million who didn't even get through. And those are the numbers that they're telling you. So you can pretty much guarantee that right now there's more than 50 million people in America that are without income. All right. They cannot buy food in the midst of a of a war that's still going on in the midst of a pandemic in the midst of hyperinflation and a collapse in economy. Take all that in. The world could soon face food shortages of biblical proportions within the next few months. That dire warning coming from the United Nations Food Agency, who point to COVID-19 as a major part in the global problem. Here's RT's Alex Mihailovich with a closer look at the impact being felt in North America. It was not the news that world leaders wanted to hear. 
Uh, at the same time, while we're dealing with COVID-19 pandemic. Addressing the U.N. Security Council, the executive director of the World Food Program, David Beasley, made it clear 135 million people around the world are headed towards starvation, with the coronavirus potentially taking an additional 130 million down that path. In a worst-case scenario, we could be looking at famine in about three dozen countries, and in fact, 10 of these countries, we already have more than 1 million people per country who are on the verge of starvation. In a number of nations that already have difficulty feeding their people, it's not only COVID-19 that is making things worse, but also locusts. From Africa to South Asia, swarms of the destructive insects are disseminating crops. Millions of acres of vegetation have been left barren by the bugs in 23 countries. It is thought that the current locust population could grow up to 400 times its current number by summer, potentially spreading to new areas. Add that to the strains of COVID-19, things do not look good for these already hurting nations. In other parts of the world, the question many are asking is, can COVID-19 affect food supplies in highly developed countries like Canada and the U.S.? This is what the U.S. Secretary of Agriculture had to say last week. It's COVID-19 is impacting food processing facilities, as you know, for Americans who be, may be worried about access to good food because of this. I want to assure you the American food supply is strong, resilient, and safe. This week, however, things don't seem quite as certain. So that made him a liar. Let's grab a quick scripture if I can remember. I think it's in Job. That made him a liar because he said that it is strong, but yet you have, uh, well, let me let a little bit more of that play while I find it. Work in at least seven major U.S. meat plants has been halted. This week in Iowa, a Tyson Foods pork processing plant that employs 2,800 workers was closed after at least 180 of its employees tested positive for COVID-19. This is uh, Joe 13 and 4. But ye are forgers of lies, ye are all physicians of no value. So he, with a with a very, very straight face, said that the food situation here in America was very strong. But yet you got food pantries that are running out of food and lines of people that are lining up six feet apart, stretching for blocks, cars stretching for miles to get food from different places around the country. Approximately 20,000 pigs a day are handled at the Iowa location and combined with a Tyson plant that has shut down in Indiana, together they account for about 18% of the U.S.'s hog slaughtering capacity. So they're going to have to slaughter all these animals too, all right? Videos are going to surface too of them, of them executing cows and killing pigs and that whole sort of thing because they're not going to have the food and the feed to feed them, all right? So it's a shame when you see videos of milk being poured out, okay? You see milk being being poured out, and uh, and when you see meat being destroyed, now you're not supposed to be no damn pork anyway. The pig, you know, it, 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 the pig will actually be allowed to do its job in the future in the kingdom, which is be the the garbage disposal cleanup. You know, uh, uh, that is supposed to, that's its job. It was never meant for consumption in the first place. That's why people are full of diabetes, you know, and, uh, heart issues, you know, and uh, that whole sort of thing. A USA Today investigation found that 150 of the nation's largest meat processing plants, which includes pork, Look at that. and beef. Hold on, you see that map? I didn't even realize it was so many in Illinois, but yeah, but most of them in the south and on the east and in the southeast. All right. So all those western plain states, you know, the, that's where you get your grains from. But all your meat is coming from uh, south in California, down there. Um, mainly, as you see, uh, uh, toward the bottom of California, north, way up top. In Washington State, because there are there are cows where there were years ago when I lived in California, all in the uh, out in the valley, 
All right, but they're showing you down there in the Southern California. Then it looks like that's Utah and Washington State. Yeah. So, uh, but most of the plants are in the in the Midwest, South, and and in the East. And all these uh places, there's no food, and that's why you see the the stores getting emptier and emptier in the in the grocery stores. And you also notice the uh, prices going up and the packaging getting smaller. In counties where the virus is spiking. When it comes to beef, the USDA has said that production is down 19% from last year at this time, meaning that there will be less beef and that it will be more expensive. Adding and what's amazing is, I just said it, and then he said it, but what's amazing, I have never seen a lie pushed so hard i mean it's like and so much evidence has come out against this this uh this whole COVID thing none of it none of it is what they said it was the deaths weren't what they said it was all right and um but yet the more people that you know like the doctors telling you that that it's a hoax and you know and that uh this was perpetrated on purpose you know, and now you got the the finger pointing of the nations. Nations are blaming China. Other nations are blaming America. You can clearly see that this is leading up to world conflict, world hunger, and the complete and utter chaos. And with all this evidence proving that this thing is not what the media has said it to be, the more evidence that comes out against them, the harder here in America they push the false narrative. It's like they go harder. When when they're exposed, when you tell when you show that they're that they're not telling the truth, they put more commercials, more advertisement. I mean, you can't turn on a TV, you can't enter a, a public place, even on the as the buses go by. If you get on public transportation, it's everywhere, six feet apart. Wear your mask, wear your gloves, and all that mess. And because why? They want to bring in this new system and. A good majority of the people here in America and around the world are aware of it. The problem, two out of three of Canada's biggest beef processing plants are suffering from COVID-19 outbreaks. When combined, the three facilities push out 95% of all of Canada's beef. Wow. The country is looking at cutting exports of meat to the U.S. to boost its own supply. Mm. The U.N. says, while time is running out... If we put our minds together and act immediately, a global catastrophe can be avoided. For RT, I'm Alex Mihailovich. Wow. So they think that they can stop what's going on. But no, the Lord is doing this. All right. And you best believe if Canada cuts off its amount of meat that it's sending to America, America's going to do something to them or, you know, pull some sort of string. Because America's all about America. It doesn't give a damn about its allies. That's why its allies are turning their backs and leaving, you know, and, and breaking away from agreements. And, you know, NATO and, and the whole EU thing is, is falling apart. And, it, and when the world finally comes to the understanding that this was done by Esau Edom here in America and not the Moabites in China. Yeah. So this is, uh, let's go to the book of Amos. Eight and eleven. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh Power, that I will send famine in the land, and not famine of bread, nor thirst of water, but the hearing of the words of of Yahweh. And that famine is is also coming upon them, because the men of the Lord in Chicago and different places around the country are 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 being moved off the streets. So you got a famine of the word. And a famine of food coming in, and both spell disaster for this place and for you wicked uh, Jakes out there. And this is Mark uh, 13 and uh, 7, and it reads, And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled. Such thing must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. And so the end is not yet, but it is near. Call Haloi Haobashim Abashai, Bashim Wakakwadash. Wa a ba ba ba.